so you want to learn some bass chords? Well, I am going to break down my song Raven, which is filled with them. When you're trying to learn a new concept, I really recommend trying to put it in context of a song instead of just, you know, learning the thing and saying, oh, maybe someday I'll use that. So let's get right into it. First shape that I want to show you is this. So basically what this shape is, is it's starting middle finger on the 7th fret of the E string, pinky on the 8th fret of the G string. And this is something called a double stop, which is a really useful basic bass chord. One of the reasons why this one works so well is because when you're looking at bass chords, a lot of the time they can get really muddy if you have these really low chords down here. So you want to have a, some distance between the root and the interval that you're playing. A double stop gives you a low note on an E string and a pinky high note on a G string. So there's a lot of separation, so it doesn't make it quite as dissonant. So this one is what you call a B major chord. These intervals, if you have your middle finger on the seventh fret, that is the root. So this is a B major chord and the pinky is the major third. If you want to make a double stop minor, just take it down a half step to seventh fret and that would be a B minor chord. But we're playing a B major chord here. Then we're gonna go up to the 14th fret and 15th fret with the pinky. Exact same shape, this becomes an F sharp major chord. Then drop down to the 9th fret, which is still the exact same shape, 9, 10. And this one's gonna be a C sharp major. Then you have this chord right here, which is gonna be um, root, minor six, minor third. This is what you call a B flat minor chord. And that's gonna be ring finger on sixth fret, of E string, index finger on 4th fret on D string, and pinky on 6th uh, fret on G string. So then you have this next little part which is kind of like the verse part. It goes like... So basically what's going on here is these chords are going to be A flat minor 9, you could call it. Then it's going to go down to an E major 7 to a B major 7. So the way these chords work with the A flat minor 9, these intervals are going to be 1, 5, and 9. So that's 11th fret on A string for your A flat. Your 5th is going to be 13th fret on the D string. And your 9 is going to be the 15th fret on the G string. And we call that the 9 instead of the 2. If you go up an A flat minor scale, it's like 1, 2, minor 3rd, 4, 5, minor 6, minor 7, root 9. So 7, 8, 9. It's a really common shape. Flea uses this an encore by Red Hot Chili Peppers. And I just like fingering it with index, middle, uh, pinky. It's not good to use the ring finger because you really have to have a lot of separation between your ring and your pinky and that kind of hurts to do that stretch. If you anchor stuff around the middle finger, it gives you a lot more flexibility. So that second chord is going to be, this is basically like an E major 7. So those intervals are going to be root 5 major 7. There's no third, but you know, if it was, it would be a like that. But, so these notes are going to be 7th fret on A string, 9th fret on D string, 8th fret on G string. So that's root, 5th, major, 7. Then this chord is going to be a B major 7 chord. And those intervals are going to be root, major 3rd, major 7. That's going to be like 14th fret, 13th fret, 15th fret. And you could do this with pinky if you want, but when you get up here in these high registers where the frets are so small, I just like using the ring finger because I feel like my ring finger is maybe a little bit stronger than my pinky. Then I do this little lead-in riff like this. So what that's doing is that's setting up the next chord. Like that, that's an A flat minor seven. But all that is, is this is like, it's kind of like doing this movement where you're doing on F sharp, it's like a power chord where you have root, fifth, or nine, eleventh fret on D string. It's like almost going up chromatically a half step by throwing in that open D string, but 
I'm not doing that because I want to make it a little bit dissonant. So I keep all three of those notes ringing there. So you have a this this interval right here, which sounds kind of ugly by itself, but if you use it in passing, it sounds kind of cool because there's a concept called tension and release and you can make something sound a little bit cleaner, a little bit more melodic if you build a little bit of tension and then go to a really smooth chord like so just doing that makes that chord sound a lot cleaner. And this chord right here is the A flat minor 7. This is another great shape to know. It's just a three note voicing. It's root minor third minor 7 and this is an A flat minor 7 so the root is going to be 11th fret of the A string that's an A flat and then we're going to do 9 on D string that's the minor 3rd and the pinky is going to be 11th fret on the G string and that's going to be your minor 7. You could also finger it like this where you have your ring finger on the high note but you know I think it's probably not as good technique especially if you're down in this register or something doing the same shape you really want to use your pinky because then you don't have to stretch as much. So next chord after that is like it's again that E major 7 shape with the fifth instead of a third except I'm starting on the major 7 down low and I'm sliding up a half step. And then for the last little part of that, I'm doing that exact same shape again that I did, except I'm doing it down here on the B. So you're gonna start in the first fret, slide up a half step to four and three, and then you're gonna go up an octave and do that exact same shape on 14, 16, 15, which you know are the same notes as two, four, three, just up an octave like that. Now check out this little shape right here. So that part's gonna repeat twice. And basically what's happening there is this first chord, this is like what you call a B major six chord. So what's going on here is you have your middle finger on 14, pinky on uh, 16 of D, and index on 13 of G. And these intervals give you, since that root is a B, this is root fifth major six. So it's like a major six chord. So then the second one, all I'm doing so I'm lifting my middle finger and then I'm gonna fret my index finger across like this. So that is kind of like the same chord, it's just gonna have a seven in the bass now. Then we're gonna go back to that A flat minor nine. And then we're gonna do the exact same thing, except we're gonna lift the pinky off and again, we're gonna be barring with the index finger, so. So that first shape, again, is going to be like 11, 13, 15 across the strings. Then it's going to be 11, 13, 11. Then we're going to do that same chord shape again, E major 7. Going to take it up to uh, the B at the 14th fret. Same shape. Then we're going to do this chord, which is going to be new. Which basically, this is going to be on A, D, G. It's going to be 9, 8, 9 with middle index ring. And this is what you call a dominant seven chord, which is a major chord with a flat seven instead of a major seven. A dominant seven chord is almost always the five chord. In this situation, we're in the key of B major. So the five is gonna be the mixolydian mode. So that makes it a dominant seven chord. Then we're just gonna repeat that pattern one more time. And then we get to this little thing. Is, is just going back and forth between uh, E major 7 chord and a B major 7 chord. Exact same shape, just starting 7th fret on A, 14th fret on A, like that, exact same shape. And then in the middle, I throw in another one of those minor 7 chords that has the 3rd and the 7th, so that's on E flat, and I kind of give it a little whack. And that's going to be 6, 4, 6 with ring index pinky. And then we're going to do it one more time. And then this is where it's going to change a little.
So we're gonna go back to the A flat minor nine chord. Then the next one is like we're gonna be going down a whole step. F sharp in the bass, which is 14 on E. But then we're gonna do index uh, barring on 13, 13. So it's gonna go 14 on E, 13, 13 on D and G. This is like an F sharp six, nine chord, this shape right here. Then we're just gonna take the root down a half step, which is gonna be an F minor seven chord. This is another really good shape to learn right here. So this is 13 on E, 13, 13 on D and G. This shape, you can take it anywhere. This is a minor nine chord. This one in particular has F in the root. So this makes it an F minor nine chord. But to play this voicing, um, these intervals are gonna be root, minor seven, minor third, like that. And then the last chord in that sequence goes half step down, so it's E, like that. So that right there is gonna be 12 on E, then still 13, 13. So this is what you call an E major seven chord. Because if you do the scale, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, major seven right there, uh, root two, three. So you have your major seven, major third, and root. So you can really get some different sounds just by barring 13, 13 here and changing the root. So this makes an F sharp six, nine, F minor seven, E major seven, just by changing the root. But the gu guide tones stay the same. So one little variation I do when I do the F sharp six, nine like this, is I put the pinky on the 14th fret, or not 14th fret, 16th fret. Like that, so. And that just gives it a little bit of rhythmic interest to kind of change it up since 13, 13 is so prominent in this little line, you could do something to vary it up a little bit. But. And that's just because this 13, 13 sound is so prominent in this line right here. You know, sometimes it could be nice to add in a little something to make it sound just a little bit different. So like. And then after that, it's gonna get into this part where I start kind of strumming with my right hand. But really, at this point, all it is is it's just a bunch of down strokes with my, uh, trying to hit my fingernails to make it sound like a little bit of a pick. You could do this whole thing with a pick if you want, but I just think it probably makes it a little rounder sounding, which I personally like uh, to use your fingers. But we're gonna take this A minor nine shape, which is just gonna be, again, 11, 13, 15, and we're just gonna do. Take it down a whole step, so now it's 9, 11, 13. Then we're gonna do E major 7 chord again. Then we're gonna do something called a power chord, which is just root fifth root, really, but the way that's voiced is index ring pinky on 4, 6, 6 of A, D, G, like that. And we're gonna do like that, and then we're gonna take that exact same shape up to 9, 11, 11. So it's the last little part's like. You could also, because you know we established that F sharp is the five chord, you can make that a dominant seven chord. So this shape instead, so you could do like. Then the outro section kind of goes like. this same pattern on the B major chord, which is again 14, 16, 15 on A, D, G. And we're kind of doing this rhythm where we're doing like bondo ba da do ba da ba do do ba da ba ba. So. And then um, at the very, for the very last hit, it's like do do ba da do ba da ba da ba da da do ba. Like that. We're gonna do this shape right here, which is 18, 16, 16. The way I'm do viewing this chord right here is like a B major chord in the first inversion. So we're gonna have the third on the bottom, then fifth, and the uh, root on top. Then we're gonna do the 
exact same thing down here, seven, nine, eight, which is the E major seven chord. Okay, and you just go back and forth between those two. One time I do a double stop down on second fret on uh, E and third fret on G and just do a little slide thing because it sounds kind of cool to have like it's always good to add a little bit of something so it doesn't get too repetitive repeating yourself a bunch of times is a pretty cool thing to do in music but if you do it a little bit too much it kind of starts to sound the same after a while so every now and then it's good to throw, throw in a little something then after doing that three times in a row I think that we get down to this chord right here which is four six four and basically what that is is like a C sharp minor seven chord but you know we don't have the third on it it's just gonna be the root fifth minor seven still a minor seven though because if you're in this key then C sharp is the two in B major which is a Dorian mode which is one two minor third four five major six minor seven root so it still has all of those chord tones in it then we're gonna go up again to E major, which is the four chord, which is a you know major seven chord. And we're gonna do a few more strums and we're gonna start with that and then we're gonna end by um, by putting the pinky on the ninth fret and that makes this a E power chord. And power chords are very clear intervals. There's no real dissonance. So you could even do them pretty low down and there isn't really a lot of ton of issue with a dissonance whereas if you did like a major seven chord down low it sounds like really really muddy but like if you just do a power chord it sounds pretty clear and because of that sometimes it can be nice to end phrases like that so that's why I do like that then it goes back to that whole little that little thing and one thing is at the very end, I hit this chord, which is just gonna be a major seven chord. And that's how I end the song, which is just gonna be root, major third, major seven. But one thing that I do is, instead of just playing that chord like that, I do sneak in that low E string just a little bit, which might be a little bit of a weird thing to think because basically what that does is that is basically like the tonic chord, but it puts the four on the bottom, which is kind of theoretically a strange idea. But if you listen to it in the blend, what I do is my left hand, I put over that string so it doesn't ring out too long. So it does ring, but it's just there for like a little bit of texture. And I know theoretically that's probably not the proper way to do things, but I like the way it sounds. I feel like it gives it a little bit of a lower end boomy sound.